and hit record here. And uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, welcome to another roundtable discussion. Uh, today, we're hosting a really awesome discussion on uh, creating diverse work environments uh, through DNI, um, and we're really focused on you know creating. Uh, uh, you know, really discussing how organizations are setting up themselves uh, to focus on uh, making work, uh, making their work culture more diverse and uh, just improve overall employee happiness. So uh, we are excited to have uh, two uh, mentors from Mentor Spaces on uh, this session with us. Uh, and uh, before we get started, we are recording this conversation. So if you aren't, uh, if you're listening and you have a friend that isn't able to attend, uh, let them know that you know we will be sharing this within Mentor Spaces uh, after the conversation. So, with that, I'll go ahead and pass it over to Randy as I pull up a quick uh, discussion uh, or uh, quick presentation here that showcases um, our uh, panelists, and uh, they can go ahead and introduce themselves. Thank you so much, Kanal. As uh, your screen is loading. Uh, I'm the uh, chief strategist here at Mentor Spaces, which means I get to uh, I get the privilege of working with our DEI leaders as well as our uh, corporate organizations who actually help to pay the bills uh, around Mentor Spaces and really help them to engage their uh, a lot of times employee resource groups members in, uh, in being members to the community within mentor spaces. So that's a lot of my work and background. I've been, uh, I wrote a book called Modern Mentoring and have focused on creating mentoring cultures and distributed organizations for the last 20 years. Uh, along with me today though, I'm just the moderator. So I'm just gonna be uh, in a sense, the traffic cop. Um, but we have with us some real professionals uh, we have Leslie. Leslie, go ahead and take a moment. Describe um, what your uh, DEI focus is and who you are, what you do. Sure. So, hi and welcome. My name is Leslie Fisher, and I am the founder of L2 Diversity, uh, which is a consultancy that focuses on diversity, equity, and inclusion, with a concentration on closing the gap for Black and Brown people. Um, I pivoted from 15 years as a independent consultant doing product management and marketing um, and just felt that the time is right now to focus on helping organizations get intentional about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Thank you so much, Leslie. And we're love to hear that uh, professional perspective today. So, uh, and along with that, we have uh, Jordan. Uh, Jordan Jones. Jordan, will you take a moment, introduce yourself, what you do, and what your interest in uh, DNI is? Sure. Thanks, Randy. Um, happy to be here. Um, like uh, Randy said, I'm a media negotiator by trade um, for Omnicom Media Group. And with there, we handle the traditional. I am responsible for the traditional and digital um, media buys um, on behalf of our company in, based out of Dallas. Um, but with that being said, um, I'm also tasked with leading our Black Leadership Network um, that is focused on centering, um, making sure that our Black employees and those that we serve are welcomed. And so that's how we also are able to utilize d and I initiatives. In addition to that, I'm also the cultural ambassador um, for our Dallas office as well too, where we also um, are founding those uh, same initiatives and principles and building upon those to make the, our workspace that much more inclusive and diverse. And so those are the areas where I had. Well, fantastic. Um, we look, for, uh, look to learn from both of you today as you share your experiences and viewpoints. Um, so as we get started, um, I, we'd like to hear from your unique perspective a little bit about what in your mind has been the journey uh, to create a more inclusive and diverse workforce. Um, either one of you can go. Who, who wants to jump on that question first? Leslie, I'll let you go first. <laughs> Ladies first. Um, <laughs> as I said earlier in my intro, I feel like now is kind of an important moment in our country's history 
um, to actually focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion. I think for the first time, probably in my lifetime, people have kind of slowed down with the pandemic and also social media has made things more prominent. And I think um, besides you know, underrepresented groups, marginalized groups, um, understanding what's going on in uh, America around social justice, um, other people finally got a view of what that's like and an understanding of what we've been experiencing all this time. And so um, not only did that have an effect in this country, it had an effect worldwide. Um, at the time that, that the George Floyd murder occurred, I was actually in Australia and we were protesting in Australia. So that's what kind of impact it had. And that's what inspired me to get involved in the DEI space. So I think um, the time is just ripe. People are more motivated to actually do more than just say the right thing. I think they're actually, the clients that I'm working with are actually doing things to make things happen and, and um, actually affect change both within the organization and also within the community. So I think that's kind of the difference that I'm seeing um, in the space. So what I hear you saying, Leslie, and we'll get more into your experience as exactly what are some of those strategies, because that's going to be the heart of our conversation today, as well as the impacts to, uh, to those people who are looking to join or make switches uh, in organizational choice, uh, in realizing more and more that uh, the workforce is independent, meaning that they're not tied to single companies anymore. They join organizational cultures out of choice today, which is also a unique change in our work environment. So having given that, what, I, what I'm hearing you say, Leslie, is that um, today we're, we're in an era of uh, social activity and responsibility like none other. Like we've stopped talking about it. Now we're starting to actually figure out how are we going to act on these things that we know we should be better engaging in, in better in different ways? And so business as usual, usual is over, is what I'm hearing, uh, as far as it relates to diversity and inclusion and equity. Um, and then with that in mind, Jordan, why don't you share a little bit uh, of your perspective on that question? Great. Well, um, Leslie just really just knocked it out of the park with that. Um, Definitely within this past year, um, we've seen a change in our society to where it's opened a lot of eyes um, to where just how we move and operate in general, it just really just, you know, again, opened a lot of eyes in particular, a lot of the majority of the eyes in regards to what we and a lot of people of color have been experiencing. So that one right there was um, a waking point. But as we transcend over into the professional space, I think we've also seen there that, you know, people are bringing these issues into the workspace. And when you're dealing with those issues outside of the workspace, it makes it that much harder to be productive in the workspace. So you're also dealing with that. But then also too, as it relates to the business, in addition to just to your, your, your internal issues, you know, where you have, you know, you know, a team member or several team members that are dealing with some real conscious issues of not being heard and lack of diversity and so forth. And mind you, um, this is before um, George Floyd, but this certainly was heightened. But when you see that transcend of the business where dollars are being affected, you know, you also factor in the, the uh, you know, the, um, the pandemic, but, you know, dollars are going somewhere else. And what we're seeing with consumers is that they're holding these companies' feet to the fire. And like Leslie mentioned, you know, with social media, you just can't put a message out anymore without it being fact checked. And so we're seeing that, you know, these efforts in order for it to come across as authentic. And I think that's what's been the key here is that whatever, you know, message that you that you display, you got to be able to back it up. Um, and that's through your product serve, but also as far as internally, how do you operate as a business? I think that's what we've seen as the biggest the biggest change within just the industry overall, and particularly within the advertising space, um, where you represent, we as Omnicom represent so many clients from all different backgrounds. Um, we've really had to have these conversations for the benefits of our clients' business, but also as a company to be like, hey, look, this is where we are. And if this is what we are, 
we got to stand our ground and we got to be, we, we have to live it if we're going to speak it out. And so um, just to wrap that up, it's just something that is in the best interest as far as culturally, but also as business as well too. And I know we'll kind of dive more in specifics later on, but just how big of a deal it is for you to get on it. And I'm glad to be a part of an organization that does. It's headed in that direction. Great, thank you, Jordan. And Leslie, we're gonna field a question to you in just a moment, but I think we're gonna stay on Jordan for a second because it's, it's interesting. I'd love to hear from your perspective, what is Omnicom doing? uh to um you know what actions and how are is omnicom addressing the concerns that you brought up well i think it's easiest for me to speak internally um because just using this day last year as a flashpoint me personally just coming into work the next day it was tough i ain't gonna lie to you it was tough and a lot of my um counterparts specifically those are black experienced the same thing and um almost immediately from top down, we had a company-wide call. And as you're familiar with Omnicom, we have so many um, agencies that are under the Omnicom umbrella that were like, no, everybody was shutting it down. We need to call attention to this. And so we had a deep look at ourselves as far as statistics, like, hey, look, where are we as an, as an organization struggling in this area? So we, we looked inward first and we're starting to build on issues there where we're building up our ERGs, which are um, BRGs, which are business resource groups, our affinity groups um, to create community, foster that workspace to where we feel comfortable coming into work to begin with and feel like we're heard that's diverse. Uh, we're also associated um, shifting those dollars and attention to other spaces that deal with DNI efforts specifically. And that's something where I'm glad to be a part of through our Black Leadership Network, you know, where we're able to do that. Um, one thing that we have coming up and I'm really excited about is just that way we can partner with um, Black organizations, um, father-led organizations and stuff and highlight those and participate and walk and support those, um, not just writing a check, not just sending a statement, but actually let's go hand in hand, let's do this, you know, let's do this work together. Um, but also hourly, you know, we're having those conversations with our clients. Um, you know, trying to, you know, help them pivot their business to which to make sure that it is on target um, where it's not being blind to what's going on out there. So we're trying to attack it on all fronts and I'm proud of the direction we're going. Thank you so much, Jordan. Um, <laughs> I want to I want to I do a follow up question on that, but we got to hear from Leslie. Leslie, you're working with multiple organizations. What has been your customer bases? You know, what, what has been the typical response? And strategically, how do you help them get started down the path of, of creating positive action and change? So piggybacking on what Jordan's saying, and he's talking about, you know, large companies, his, a large company and his clients are probably large companies. The clients I deal with are actually small consulting firms. And so it's a little bit different. I think um, in my case, the clients I have have both recognized um, a need for change and they realize that they, you know, there's, there's some level of diversity, but they could do more. And as consulting firms, they recognize the need to um, impact diversity for their clients as well. So in one case, um, and I'm just going to focus on a couple of these clients, but in one case, uh, they're, the, the consulting firm's clients services Silicon Valley clients, so high-tech firms and things of that nature. In another case, they service financial service companies. So they wanted to actually uh, change their recruitment practices in a way to allow for more diversity and remove bias. And so we worked towards that. We reviewed their policies. But to, to back up a little bit, in, in most cases, clients come to me and they're like, I just need to, you know, we need to get more black and brown people in here. We need to make this change now. We need to start doing this now. And I have to say, you know, wait a minute, let's back up. Let's kind of see what the environment's like, see how receptive people are going to be to coming to this environment and then we'll start to look outside the environment. So I work with clients to make sure that um, 
they have some goal, some high level objectives in place that are related to the success of their business because in that way it's going to be something that's sustainable i also have them look at um, what kind of statement they want to put out there that is actually actionable and that can get in front of their clients can get in front of community can also get in front of uh, people within the organization so that they can see what change is happening. Um, then we start to look at, um, you know, what kind of training is needed, uh, removing unconscious bias, looking at microaggressions, um, even looking at things like white savior complex, um, you know, really getting at what's going on inside of people. And I think what I see happen is that there's a transformation it's almost like the blinders come off and then you can't, you can't put them back on. And so um, people start realizing, oh, I've, you know, regardless of re what race or whatever they are, what gender, I, I've got some stuff that I bring to the table that could impede somebody from wanting to um, either work with me or work within this organization. So we, we get the internal stuff um, kind of worked on and looked at. We also take a look at where they are, because in, in some cases, clients aren't even, uh, you know, bigger organizations track demographics and stuff on boarding. Um, however, smaller organizations may not be doing that work. So they may, you know, kind of have a sense of where they are, but we actually get the data to see where they are. And then from there, they can start to set some realistic goals and objectives around where they want to be. And that's kind of where we are now. But you can already see the transformations happening within the organization in that um, they're actually now recognizing when you know, a consultant could be on a, on a gig and realize that something that the client is doing uh, could be racist or discriminatory. And they will gently point that out. I've had, I've had that happen. Or um, you, in some cases, you have to meet clients where they're, where they're at when the stuff with the anti-Asian uh, violence was happening. Um, you know, you have to kind of see where clients are with their culture and how they want to express what they're going through. And in some cases, people may not want to put that out there immediately. So you have to work with, with people where they are too. So those are some of the things that we're putting in place. But also I want to mention, because this is Mentor Spaces, one of the important things that I also work towards with clients is to have that um, cross-cultural interaction. I think one of the biggest ways that you can uh, learn about other cultures and learn about yourself is through interaction, through developing authentic relationships. And so uh, we have instituted some mentorship programs that allow for those kind of connections. Um, and that's kind of why I'm here today. Oh, you're on mute, Randy. <laughs> Sorry, thanks so much, Leslie. It's uh, good to hear your perspective. Uh, so what I hear you saying is that organizations who are looking to try to start this probably need to look at benchmarking what their, you know, what is the current culture of their organization? What stasis, where, where are they at? Uh, so that the they can strategize. So I'm hearing two things. First of all, you know, you need to do a little research. You need to baseline your current kind of culture and activities so then you can build upon that and begin to create actionable strategies. Um, so thanks so much for that. You bring the mind of the consultant uh, uh, to the conversation. I appreciate that. Uh, Jordan, let's come over and talk a little bit about what are you learning as you've engaged over the last year and it may, maybe even before that probably uh, within, uh, you know, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and uh, efforts, what are you personally learning or what is your organizational le learning? And maybe if you could, what are, you know, who wants to be involved in this? Who do you see getting involved in this kind of activity? And uh, what are some of the challenges that might be involved with that? Yeah, um, that's, a, that's a really good question. I think one thing as an organization, even myself, um, realizing what we're learning is just how much need, how needed it is um, to be on top of this. 
and making sure that, you know, I'm ahead of it. I think another thing that we're also learning is how much more work we still have to do and how this is just something that it's not fully completed, but you're just always progressing, right? And so over this time, um, again, like Leslie was saying, a lot of times we've had to do a lot of internal um, research there. And so it's been an opportunity for us to really just pause and reflect, like, hold up, like, before we give, you know, we advise our clients and those that we serve and ultimately the consumers, what are we as an organization, as an office, as a team doing? How are we looking, you know, there? And that's something where even just me in my office, I'm literally the most marginalized person in my office. I am a black male in an office that is predominantly white female. And so that was something where when I first presented these you know, my, my stance to my team and to my leaders, I was like, hey, look, you know, take this from a perspective of someone who is truly the most marginalized per person. And let's, let's build our culture up from there um, to where that person, whether it's me or whoever else comes after me or whatever, doesn't have to feel like they're secluded. And so that it's always welcoming. So it's been a, an opportunity for us as a team, as an organization, as an office to really look within first. And so that's something that has been positive. Um, I think another thing is for us to just, again, be able to look at ways that we can institute genuine change, like you mentioned. So what we've done, in, and specifically in our office, is we have those real life conversations, and we're not running from it. Um, and so biweekly, we'll send out a resource, you know, for us to tackle that highlights um, something that's going on within, whether it be a heritage month, like for instance, you know, this month being AAPI, you know, we have a resource that highlights that, whether it be a podcast, an article or whatever. And we have, we set aside an hour each week and we really dive into that, unpack that. So we can get to have a better understanding of what that is. Just a heads up for this week, obviously it's the murder of George Floyd. And we're going to be talking about the root of the issues and it's not just his death, but it's what led up to that. And we have some real issues that bring us closer together as people where we have authentic conversations to where we can build that trust within each other. Um, some of that has spawned just like some people um, to answer a question who is ready to tackle it and some people are not. Not everybody is. And, but for those that aren't as ready to dive in and get into that, one thing that I've learned too is that, you know, we got to be able to at least build some level of trust and understanding. And so some of those um, activities to help build that is really we've had, you know, just like your typical trust games, you know, just like, hey, look, during our meeting, we're not gonna talk about what's going on on our desk today. We're gonna to just have some games that are just not like dominoes or tic-tac-toe, no. They're gonna be fun games, but they're gonna allow us to get to know each other because I feel like when you know the person next to you, you don't see them as just another team member. You see them as John or Sally. And once I know a little bit more about John or Sally and they know a little bit more about me, then maybe they can understand a little bit more what I'm going through and we can really work to get somewhere and build a bridge. And so that's something, just some efforts that internally that we have fostered and that have really helped to lead and build on our DEI initiatives. Um, but again, like I said, we're learning. We still have a long way to go, but I'm glad we actually are starting that. Oh, looks like you're on mute again. <laughs> thanks so much, Jordan. I, I truly appreciate your perspective and, and thanks for a, a well thought out uh, response to that question. Leslie, over to you. Um, and just as a kind of a warning, uh, we're going to talk about this and then and, and finish up this part of the conversation. Then I want to switch towards, um, you know, the idea of thinking about what would have, you know, if someone were picking an organization today, what are some hallmarks or indicators that it's going to be the right fit for you? But before we get there, Leslie, uh, what are, uh, again, what are some of the things that you're learning and your clients are learning as they travel down this road of meaningful engagement around this topic? So, yeah, to echo what Jordan's saying, I think um, one of the biggest things that has happened is, like I said, the blinders have kind of come off. And I think things that traditionally, there's a couple of instances in particular I'm thinking of where, um, manager, a manager, for instance, would kind of let things go, let some microaggressions go that were coming from um, another worker. And after um, engaging with some of the initiatives, DEI initiatives, um, this person 
felt the need to actually call the person out on, on uh, the microaggressions. So uh, what I'm seeing is uh, people being authentic, people actually recognizing when things are happening and actually taking actions as a result, which is amazing and, and totally what you want. Um, similar to what Jordan was saying, uh, we make sure that there's also opportunities to have safe spaces to talk about race, talk about um, issues that are going on. When the uh, trial verdict was coming out for Chauvin, um, I made sure that I met with my clients to discuss kind of, uh, you know, contingency, what to do if the trial verdict went one way, one way versus the other way. Um, and in some cases, you know, clients didn't even really want to talk about this. It's like they were just, you know, so emotional, they didn't even want to think about it. But I think it's important to make sure that as things are happening, you recognize that uh, em employees and workers need uh, a moment to react, to process, to grieve. And so making sure that there's resources available, that there's um, a space to do that, whether we, you know, we, we were communicating on Slack, people were talking about um, conversations and I can't remember, I'm spacing on the name of it, but it, it's a, a chat room that you can kind of go on that started in LinkedIn, Clubhouse, that's what it is. They were talking about Clubhouse um, hallway conversations and things like that. Um, so just, making sure that you have those safe spaces to be authentic and to talk about issues. I also make sure that I bring visibility to days of significance um, and similar to what Jordan was saying, um, making sure that uh, there's opportunities to celebrate different uh, days of significance. So we're, we're thinking about Juneteenth coming up, we're thinking about Pride Month coming up um, and things of that nature, but also making sure that there are those connections. Uh, I think that's one of the most important and key things, making sure that leadership management actually gets to know the total person, um, not just as an employee, but engaging with what they're about as a person. And because these are small organizations, they have the luxury of being able to do that. Um, and I think that helps to create a much more inclusive environment. Um, but we're all, always being wanting to be diligent about being inclusive. And so I'm also asking my clients to think of, you know, what are some norms that they would like to even um, have to make sure that there's an inclusive climate? How can they assess and make sure that people are getting fair opportunity to speak up, that you're getting um, you know, feedback and representation from everybody and that nobody's leaving anybody out. How are you dealing with conflict? Um, I have one client that um, because of a culture, kind of the cultural learning, they had a tendency not to want to deal with conflict, to run away from conflict. So how can you look at conflict as an opportunity um, and, and helping to this person to transform and use the conflict that was happening to help to create a more inclusive environment. So it's it's those kind of things that um, we we do in order to keep perpetuating diversity and inclusion. Thanks so much, Leslie and Jordan. We unfortunately have come to the end of our time, so I'm going to pass this over to Kanal. We're not going to get our last question in, but I think the spirit of the conversation today tells you the kind of organization that you want to look for. I think you want to look for that organization that emulates or has the hallmarks of openness, uh, certainly openness to inclusion and diversity, willing to have honest conversations, willing to even answer your questions about those issues e during the interviewing process. And as you meet with hiring managers, make sure that uh, you're not just being passed over quickly or that's being dismissed, but it's something that's taken uh, seriously, because these are very serious conversations, and it's important that we all feel that we can find a place to fit and thrive and, as we look to uh, engage our talents in an organization's effort. So with that said, Kanal, you going to wrap us up? 
Yeah, let's do that. Thanks again for the conversation here. This was really uh, insightful and uh, very, uh, very empowering here. So uh, a couple of final notes before we hop off here. Um, uh, if you like to connect with any of these individuals, Leslie or Jordan, uh, please raise your hand in the concierge channel on Mentor Spaces, and we can make one-on-one -on -one connections. Um, if you're interested in uh, connecting with them or from a personal perspective of having them uh, provide some guidance uh, on uh, organizations that you're joining and how to evaluate those organizations for diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, so feel free to raise your hand right now. I see one hand already raised, so we'll make sure to follow up with you. Um, and uh, and then, yeah, feel free to message us in the concierge channel inside of Mentor Spaces and we'll make those connections. Um, second point is that we will have another roundtable discussion next week on Tuesday. Uh, this is all about uh, a conversation that we'll have with a panel of mentors, some also from Omnicom Media Group, um, as well as other organizations that we work with. Uh, the topic is thriving through change. Uh, so the panel of mentors will share their stories of how they navigated uh, times of change uh, within their career or in their careers or within their organizations or within the world <laughs> that we've seen over the past couple of a couple of months. So uh, let's uh, all join that conversation as well um, and share with your friends. Uh, we will post that session later today to make sure that uh, you all can join. Uh, and with that, we can close this off. Thank you again, Leslie and Jordan for joining us today and Randy for moderating. Thank you so much. Bye everyone. Thanks for having us. Bye. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Bye.